In the midst of the deafening clamor of battle and thunderous booms, where Allied forces approached with deep determination, the Nazi Germans introduced their secret card, Volkssturm. As a faint ray of hope for Germany surrounded by Soviet forces from the east and America from the west, the Volkssturm became the last pillar of defense. The Volkssturm was a Nazi German militia group in the final years of World War II. This group was not established by the Wehrmacht, but rather on strict orders from the Nazi party, under the leadership of Adolf Hitler. The historic day of October 18, 1944, marked a significant milestone when the existence of the Volkssturm was officially announced to the world. With great enthusiasm and determination, the Volkssturm gathered German men aged 16 to 60, who had not yet been involved in combat. They were the last element in the total war vision, created by the Minister of Propaganda, Joseph Goebbels. This effort was nothing but a reflection of the Nazi determination to defend and revive their national spirit amidst the raging war storm. After undergoing brief training, Volkssturm members swore allegiance to Hitler and were sent to the battlefield. Many of them were teenagers and middle-aged men with basic military training, primarily because Germany had mandatory military service for young men for several generations. However, due to a lack of necessary war equipment, Volkssturm members were asked to bring their own gear, such as clothing and cooking utensils. This undoubtedly made them appear less professional as soldiers. Nevertheless, they were provided with various types of weapons, including firearms captured from enemies during the war, and weapons specifically made for the Volkssturm, although their quality was not perfect. At the critical point of 1944, when Germany felt immense pressure from deep incursions by Soviet forces, the need for troops became increasingly urgent. This situation forced them to mobilize people from diverse backgrounds, including those previously deemed unsuitable for the battlefield, such as the disabled, elderly, and children. The concept of the Volkssturm had actually sprouted since 1925, but this militia group truly solidified when Adolf Hitler issued orders to recruit millions of men. Joseph Goebbels and other propaganda experts portrayed the Volkssturm as a tangible manifestation of the German people's spirit and determination to resist the pressure from the Red Army and Western allies. They heralded the Volkssturm as a symbol of German unity, where social status or age was no longer a barrier, everyone united to defend their community. In an effort to reinforce the total war narrative they had spun, the Nazi government vigorously promoted the Volkssturm. However, as the intensity of the battle increased, a significant number of German people began to realize that the Volkssturm might merely be a desperate measure by Germany against Allied pressure. To ensure effective operations, the Nazi party required individuals who were passionate and highly dedicated. Consequently, the Volkssturm forces were under the direct supervision of senior Nazi officials. However, the Volkssturm did not only operate at the local level. With Heinrich Himmler overseeing armament and training, this organizational structure encompassed national strength. The Nazi party mandated every Gauleiter, or district leader, to lead, recruit, and organize the Volkssturm in their districts. Nevertheless, as the tide of war continued to shift, the momentum changed. On February 12, 1945, the Nazis encouraged the participation of German women in the Volkssturm as reinforcements. In a swift response, 14-year-old girls were intensively trained in combat skills, including the use of weapons like Panzerfausts and hand grenades. This continued until Germany surrendered in May 1945. Amidst the intense battle whirlwind in Berlin, the Volkssturm became a central figure, spreading across various strategic points in the city. Although aware that their efforts might be in vain, most of them chose to sacrifice to the last drop of blood, rather than fall into the hands of the Soviet troops. In the heart of Berlin, around 60,000 Volkssturm members gathered, divided into 92 battalions with diverse strategies and armaments. Some battalions were stationed at the front lines with weapons, while others remained inside the city unarmed. However, the realities of the battlefield were undeniable. Faced with waves of attacks from 2.5 million Soviet soldiers, supported by modern war technology, the German army, including the Volkssturm, found themselves in a highly pressured situation. One prominent story comes from Battalion 3-115 Simonstadt. With a strength of 770 men, around their 50s in age, and the majority being World War I veterans, their skills and preparations were impressive. 
However, despite putting up fierce resistance against the Soviets, the heavy blows of battle eventually forced them to retreat. While World War II was coming to an end, Volkssturm leaders and Hitler youth in Berlin fought fiercely. In other places like Parkim and Mecklenburg, older elites tried to stop the resistance to save lives and property. Although the initial noble intention of the Volkssturm was to resist the powerful Allied forces and attempt to change Germany's fate after the defeat in World War I, some fanatical Volkssturm members persisted in clinging to Nazi ideology until the very end. It was this fanaticism that led them to take harsh actions against fellow Germans deemed to be surrendering or lacking courage. This resulted in thousands of deaths in several regions of Germany during the spring of 1945, 